This is CBC Here and Now. Communications chaos leads to travel turmoil here at St. John's Airport. She went in with a migraine, but turns out it was something much worse. A community cleans up, but the federal government may not help rebuild after flooding in Mud Lake. And Salmon River shut down Why DFO is going with catch and release. Well, it's weekend time and the weather is looking fine. Perfect conditions for the St. John's Folk Festival. I'll have all the details coming up. Well, let's get to our top story. Some are calling it Quiet NL, a major cell phone outage across Atlantic Canada. And it's starting to clear up this evening. Bell services were brought back online as of 4.30 island time after being out for nearly four hours. A spokesperson told CBC that the outage was caused by damage to multiple fiber optic network links. Well, one place where things got especially hairy today was St. John's International Airport. And that's where here now is Terry Roberts joins us live. Terry, what's the situation looking like there right now? Well, the situation, first of all, Peter, I'm glad to have my phone back in top working order. Uh, but right now, as you can see behind me, it's uh, pretty quiet here. But uh, you go back two, two and a half hours ago, there was uh, some turmoil here at St. John's Airport, mainly because the communications, all the computers went down, the systems that allow people to check in, well, that went down. So what happened? The unheard of. People started using ink, uh, really uh, checking in uh, passengers manually, boarding passes written out in ink. So obviously that led to some delays right here. But Air Canada uh, took it in stride and so did those passengers. There was uh, lots of pizza, there was uh, uh, lots of drinks being handed out to passengers, uh, toys for children, coloring books, whatnot. One Air Canada uh, representative told me today, we've learned from our mistakes of the past. And they got four or five flights out of here uh, during the height of that uh, uh, communications chaos today. But uh, uh, pandemonium, pandemonium, we've been told, in Halifax led to at least one cancellation. So about 70 Air Canada passengers went home today, were told to rebook online, and some of them told me it will probably be Sunday before they can get back, uh, uh, get, get into Halifax and rebook those flights. Now the situation was a little bit different. If we walk down here to Porter Airlines, a little bit different here today, flights cancelled outright. Uh, passengers were told there was nothing they can do for them. I spoke to uh, one woman today who was trying to get to a family reunion. She was told the, the next uh, flight she could get would be August the 13th, long after that reunion was, uh, was over. And some passengers just started going and booking with other, uh, with other airlines to try and get out of here and pay more money uh, in order to do that. So there was a lot more frustration down here and you could hear that from uh, people like this uh, couple I spoke to from Montreal. A flight has been cancelled and uh, they're rescheduling uh, us, rescheduling us. Yes. <laughs> the, the earliest flight out is uh, August the 10th on Porto. So there's nothing they can do for us and we're not satisfied with it. I'm coming home. So we're not going now? No, we're not going. We're going to miss it all. Okay, I'll face my mom and dad now. Okay, I'll be, are you home? No, I'm still at work. I'm staying okay. at work now till the end of the day. All right, I'll see you at home. Okay. Hi. Hi. Love you. Bye. Tell us what happened, Megan. We're not going. They can't get us on. There's no space. We can't get on till August 13th, and all our family's coming back home on Wednesday. So we're not going. We're gonna miss it. <laughs> uh, that's right. And if you look on the uh, departures board right now, there are four flights that are delayed. Still some question about whether at least two of those flights will make it into Halifax tonight, whether they will be receiving any more planes. But there was a different story for at least one, uh, one airline here, and that's WestJet. Right? You see behind me, they had about a uh, dozen flights going out of here today. Their situation, much more uh, fluid because their communications hub located in Calgary. So passengers went through here without much of a hitch. Reporting live from St. John's International Airport, I'm Terry Roberts for Here and Now. Wasn't just the airport, many debit and credit dependent businesses across the province were also impacted by today's outage. Some bank branches closed their doors this afternoon due to the failure and at Gander Airport, travelers faced similar delays. So far it's been a lot of waiting. We got here about an hour ago and so we've just been waiting to hear about our flight, see if it's delayed or not. Well, it obviously is. Um, they're currently doing everything manually so it's taking some time. Uh, my girlfriend, Jandra, is just right now waiting in line, so it's going pretty slow. Well, I'm here with uh, my daughter 
and her significant other. They are trying to get to Edmonton via Halifax with a short connection and then through Montreal with another short connection. Well, we're feeling a little apprehensive because uh, if they get stuck in Halifax and or Montreal, and if debit and visa is still uh, problematic and their bank is shut down, which we know CIBC is right at this time, uh, then that's problematic for them if they have to get a hotel, if they have to stay over and that. Well, a paramedic living in Carmenville says he's used to seeing trauma on the job, but when his wife went to Gander Hospital with a migraine, he wasn't prepared to hear that the 27-year-old woman had suffered a stroke. Here now's Ryan Cook spoke with Nathaniel White about his wife, Carly. Nathaniel, can you just kind of describe for me what happened with your wife and how you ended up here in St. John's? Well, she was airlifted here um, Monday evening because she had a stroke and uh, they did a um, surgery on her Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. Uh, they were able to remove all the dead tissue from her left cerebellum and remove the clot. How did she come to figure out that she had had a stroke? Uh, she doesn't know she had a stroke nor she's had surgery. She probably still thinks it's Monday. Um, we dropped her off at Gander Hospital Monday morning and she started to deteriorate and that's what prompted them to investigate with an MRI and they saw a mass with the, which they originally thought was a tumor but with a contrast dye MRI here in St. John's they were able to uh, determine it was a stroke. You guys were just married one year ago, is that correct? Yes, so driving in from Central all the way to to St. John's in the middle of the night alone, just thinking of being so young and alone and thinking without my wife for, you know, only being a year and possibly losing her was just, it was overwhelming. Well, some sad news to report tonight. A 28-year-old man has died after drowning in Pinchgut Lake on the west coast of the island. Police say it appears the man drowned Thursday after the inflatable raft he was in deflated. People at the scene said the man became distressed and was unable to swim to shore. Police don't believe drugs or alcohol were a factor. Well, damage caused by the Mud Lake flood may not qualify for federal disaster funding. That's the message residents have been getting from provincial officials. Some still haven't returned home since May after a flood forced the community to evacuate. Eleven weeks later, they're still waiting to hear back from the provincial government on the cost of the damage to their properties. Jacob Barker has more. It's been nearly three months since these scenes took place. Mud Lake awakened in the middle of the night, water rushing into some people's homes. In the following days, they were told to fill out forms. Assessments and appraisals were on the way. I encourage everybody to, uh, to get the applications in as quickly as possible and we'll have appraisers on the ground to, to, to uh, as quickly as we possible. Well, I didn't think that we'd be three months in and still no further ahead. Now three months on and people in Mud Lake have still not received any sign from the provincial government as to what the extent of the damage is to their properties. Best also says she was told by more than one person from the province that the community wouldn't reach the threshold of about $1.5 million worth of damages for federal disaster relief funding. In a message last week from MHA Perry Trimper, a similar message was expressed. I don't know exactly what that means. Does that mean that they have our assessments and they're trying to find out where they're going to get the money? Do they have the assessments and they don't know how to tell us that they have no money? Like, we don't know. We really don't know. Best says eight families have yet to return to the community. Others are waiting to know how to proceed with repairs or even relocation. We're already into August month and we still have displaced people that aren't home and they can't go home because they have damages under their home. They're told to wait to get your assessment before you start doing anything to it and how can they start if they don't have their assessments. So In a statement the provincial government says it's still processing claims for damages and that it's committed to helping the people of Mud Lake including through disaster financial assistance. Jacob Barker, CBC News, Happy Valley Goose Bay. Well, it looks like this is going to be the last weekend for anyone who wants to catch and keep a salmon. After Sunday, salmon rivers in Newfoundland will be catch and release only. The reason? DFO says lower than expected salmon numbers. I don't have an exact answer. Uh, the ice this year, the prolonged uh, and extreme ice, certainly wasn't a friend of the rivers this season. But uh, there is something else we potentially happening outside of the rivers as well.
Carolyn's here with a look at the weekend weather. But before we get to that, last night on the show, Carolyn, you were talking about that unfortunate situation that happened while you were filming at the regatta. Yes, uh, if you were watching, I talked about two minors came up behind me and yelled uh, that very unfortunate, all too well known uh, F H R I T. P phrase. If, and if you don't um, know what it is, you don't want to know. Yeah, 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 we can't really say it on air, but uh, I can say that I have just uh, received an apology from one of the young men involved, and I just want to say thank you, and I absolutely uh, accept your apology, and I'm more than happy just to move on. <laughs> Hopefully some lessons were learned in all of this. Absolutely. So let's move on to the weather now, shall Much we? Much sunnier topic. <laughs> yes, it's going to be fantastic. What a weekend in store for us, for the island at least. Tonight, if you're heading down to the Folk Festival, it's going to be a beautiful evening, a little bit on the cool side, 10 degrees in St. John's with cloudy skies, but it's not raining, so that's a good thing. And uh, some cool temperatures uh, for the rest of the Island, but uh, just a bit of cloud and lows of around 13 degrees. Some showers in Lab City this evening, 15 there, and uh, Nain is also getting some showers uh, this evening, and that will continue into tomorrow because of the system that you can see coming through here. But the island is just looking glorious. Maine will see about uh, 5 to 15 millimeters of rain tomorrow, so it'll be quite wet there and uh, also uh, Lab City could see some showers, but this is how we're looking for St. John. So if you are heading uh, out to any of the festivals, there's also the Busker Festival happening. So we're going to start off with some cloud cover in the morning in 12 degrees and uh, it'll heat up to about 22 with lots of sunshine in the afternoon and the evening still looking nice. Six degrees and the winds will be nice and light. So just look at this. This is like a glorious summer Saturday. We're, we're looking at temperatures in central in the upper 20s. Sunshine pretty much everywhere. St. Anthony 22 degrees, Clarenville 25. So uh, even down along the coast there it's 17 degrees on the coast, but as you move inland, it'll be like 10 degrees warmer. So things are looking quite nice on the island. As I mentioned, Nain is in for some wet weather, 5 to 15 millimeters, and uh, Lab City Churchill Falls could also see some wet weather, but still really warm there, 26 degrees in Churchill Falls. Cartwright, McCovic, 29, 28 degrees. Mary's Harbor, 27. It's just looking great for a Saturday. I know I'm a little bit enthusiastic, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure you are too. So Sunday as well is looking great for the island. Uh, some more showers coming in for Labrador. It's just kind of that constant uh, moving of that, of that system, bringing some showers. So Lab City will see the bulk of that on Sunday, 17 degrees as the high there. Nain, 19. Uh, you could see some of those showers too later on in the day. Cartwright still looking great at 26 degrees. And the island on the west, uh, you could see some of uh, the showers from that system, but temperatures are still nice and warm, 25 degrees in Grand Falls, Windsor, and here in St. John's, 21 with some sun and clouds. So yet again, another nice day to be heading outdoors. As we begin the work week, though, things take a turn. We have lots of wet weather coming up, and it's going to affect pretty much everyone. You can just see the band going right across. This is Monday morning, so it will be quite a wet uh, start to the work week. So you can see showers pretty much everywhere, except for Porter Bass will get a little bit of a break uh, there, 20 degrees. Temperature still nice and warm in the, the mid to low 20s. Uh, cooling down significantly in Nain, though, on Monday, 9 degrees as the high there with some showers. So things are looking pretty good, pretty summery for the next seven days. We have some nice temperatures in the east and in central and in western Labrador and lots of sunshine, just enough rain to feed all the plants and in Labrador as well. Some more showers on the way for you guys, but still you're looking at some nice temperatures in the mid 20s, 23 on Thursday and uh, some sun on Friday for the east. Thanks, Carolyn, and it'll be some good weather for fishing this weekend, but a pair of sisters from Hare Bay got an up-close and unexpected counter on a fishing trip on Saturday. But first a warning, we've had to bleep some of the language. 16-year-old Allison Collins recorded this video of a shark coming within just a few feet of the boat that her family was on near St. Brendan's. You can hear Allison and her sister 
screaming when they realized just how close the 10-foot shark came. She says the family fishes five or six times each summer, but has never come this close to a shark. Her dad was cutting and cleaning the cod and figures that's probably what attracted that guy. Well, if you're in St. John's today without cell phone service and looking for something to do, the downtown St. John's Busker Festival was the place to be. Nakshit Pandit was there on more with what you can expect for the festival. Magic tricks, pogo sticks and fire. All were packed into the first day of the St. John's Busker Festival. There was a bit of a drizzle to start, but with cell service down for many, families didn't seem to mind. Jesse Rice was standing in the audience when Ernest the Magnifico pulled him into the act. I was trying to get the money off the car, the back of the car. And the car was moving, right? Yeah. And you had a beer on your head? Yes. And how did that go? Uh, not very well. The performers come from all across the globe. Others from right here in St. John's. Michael Conway's magic act was the first of the day. Did you have fun today? I did, 10 out of 10, yeah. So we have one show today, three tomorrow, so I'm very excited. The city's where Conway got his start. Well, I started with birthday parties, kind of worked my way up from there. Now I do like a arts and culture center every Christmas, and I like to do stage shows, you know, but I do a lot of private events, and that's where I get a lot of my experience, you know, going to people's homes and performing that way, so. Jacob Byrne didn't mind being a part of the Magic Act. What, what happened when you put your hand in the bag? What came out? An egg. An egg. How did that happen? Because he magically put it in. The Busker Fest continues all weekend. There will be shows at Harborside Park, Scotia Centre and the TD Building. Nakshi Pandit, CBC News, St. John's. Well, after the break, I'll speak with John Drover, the head of the province's Folk Festival, about what's different this year. Shaping up to be a nice weekend in St. John's. Good news for the Folk Festival. It gets underway tonight. Now, last year the focus was on local artists, but as I found out today, this year's lineup is very different. 
So this year's Folk Festival has a bit of a Canada 150 feel to it. What have you decided to do this year? Well, we thought since it was Canada's uh, 150th, and last year, of course, was our 40th, and we had almost a complete Newfoundland and Labrador lineup, and we thought we'd give our own artists a little break and invite our friends from the mainland down and show them how we have a good time. Uh, so we have uh, an act uh, from every province and one of the three territories. How hard was it to try and juggle that and find people and get them all to be able to travel here? Well, we uh, we normally get about 200 applicants a year for the positions, and so just sifting through those, you will find uh, you know that you have Canada pretty well represented. Uh, and then you know we go out and search in for a few others. I got to say, Alberta was the toughest province to find. Why would you? Why was that? I have no idea. It was just uh, there's not a lot of traditional music out there unless you're going like with Ukrainian folk or uh, or other Central or Eastern European stuff so I I mean I don't know I'm just making total guesses but I guess Atlantic Canada was probably not very hard to uh, Atlant fill those spots Atlantic Canada you could fill 10 festivals uh, with Atlantic Canada you could fill 10 festivals with Newfoundland and then once you get into Nova Scotia Prince Edward Island yeah definitely lots of uh, folk traditions there Last year you tried ha with the focus on Newfoundland and Labrador for the anniversary. What did you see in terms of the numbers and the popularity? Did, th did that affect the overall attendance? Um, I find that a lot of people who come to the Folk Festival come to the Folk Festival because it's the Folk Festival. If the weather is good, people will come out and they're happy enough with uh, whatever you have on stage. And we do have a lot of Newfoundland and Labrador acts this year. Certainly well over half of our lineup uh, is local. Well, good luck and hopefully the weather cooperates. Thank you very much, Peter. Welcome back, and time now to check out some of the birthdays and anniversaries this week. Yes, let's see who's celebrating. Birthday greetings to Sophie Flight, who will turn 99 on Sunday. Sophie is formerly of Buckins, now living in St. John's. Happy 53rd anniversary to Claude and Marjorie Russell of Carmenville. Happy 67th anniversary to Willie and Susie Barrow of Gambo, who celebrated this week. Happy 50th wedding anniversary to Jerome Bolt and Madonna Pitcher Bolt of Paradise. Happy 60th anniversary to Harry and Francis Hallett. Happy 57th wedding anniversary to Leonard and Florence Harvey of Norris Arm North. Congratulations to Pleeman and Sadie Rimmer from Lewisport who celebrated their 61st wedding anniversary. Harold and Penny Duffett of Catalina are celebrating their 56th 
anniversary. Happy 50th wedding anniversary to Mary and Alan Warren of St. John's. Raymond and Dolores White of Stephenville Crossing are enjoying a very happy 66th wedding anniversary. Happy 94th birthday to Gordon Smith of Manuals, currently living in St. John's. Happy 50th anniversary to Bill and Doreen Walters from their friends and family from Wabash, Conception Bay South and Ottawa. Best wishes to Nellie and Mac Moss of Gander who will be celebrating their 50th anniversary tomorrow. And happy 90th birthday to Ruth Single who is celebrating today. She currently lives in Kellegrews. Congratulations to Lorna and Boyce Cull of Glovertown celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary tomorrow. Happy 53rd anniversary to Elsie and Oakley Johnson of North Harbor Placentia Bay. A very happy anniversary to John and Nora Mercer of Whitburn celebrating 50 years tomorrow. Happy 60th wedding anniversary to Albert and Marie Reed of Hearts Delight. And it's a 56th wedding anniversary for Alma and Shirley Lovell of McIvers. Anniversary greetings to Cyril and Virtue Marshall of Grand Falls, Windsor, who are celebrating their 61st wedding anniversary. Lewis and Julia Wheaton of Fredericton, Newfoundland are celebrating their 54th wedding anniversary coming up on August 8th. Happy 50th anniversary to Carmen and Shirley Olford from Paradise. It's a 64th wedding anniversary for Walter and Anna Reed. Happy 50th anniversary to Don and Eunice Lambert visiting from Waterloo, Ontario. Happy 60th anniversary to Harley and Susie Anderson of Meadows. They celebrated earlier this week. Happy 93rd birthday to Annie Berry of Placentia from Family and Friends. And happy 103rd birthday to Muriel Thompson of Corner Brook. She's celebrating today. Clyde and Hazel Collins of Hare Bay, Bonavista Bay, are celebrating their 66th wedding anniversary coming up on August 14th. Happy 92nd birthday to Cecilia Sr. of Red Harbor, Placentia Bay, who's celebrating today. You can see her doing one of her favorite pastimes, putting together a puzzle. Celebrating her 100th birthday next week is Mary Keating, formerly of Renews, now residing in St. John's. Congratulations. And here's a pic of Rita Perry, who celebrated her 94th birthday at home in Bloomfield on August 1st. She was born in the neighboring community of Musgrave Town, but many will know her from Dunville. Happy 50th anniversary to Rod and Matilda Pomeroy, formerly of Marachine Island, but now living in St. John's. It's also a 50th wedding anniversary for John and Margaret Hanrahan of Marystown, celebrating tomorrow. George and Helen Evans of Conception Bay South are celebrating their 61st wedding anniversary on Monday. Happy 70th anniversary to Cecil and Vernice Alley of St. David's, celebrating tomorrow. Happy 55th wedding anniversary to Ben and Catherine Farrell of Harbor Grace. And happy 60th wedding anniversary to Anna and Richard Louvel of Labrador City. Yeah, and here's another uh, pair of lovebirds. Yeah, well, or another love happy seals, I know. <laughs> to show you. Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, to. Oh my goodness, I don't have her name up here. Let me see if I, I can't remember. Mary. I think her first name is Mary. I'm so sorry. There's but an this M down is, there. So, this yep. is Red Bay. This is Red Bay. And uh, thank you so much for sending in this lovely picture. Yeah, it's been a great summer for icebergs, mm -hmm. seals, nice weather. Go out and enjoy the weekend, everyone. Yes. Go, go. <laughs> it's going to be a great one. Enjoy, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> Good night.